Hi, I'm Emily from Life So Savory, and today we're going to get ready for summer by making a fun gardening kneeling pad. So when I'm working in the garden, I like this kneeling pad because one, it helps protect my knees, and two, depending on what I'm wearing, it also keeps me from kneeling in the dirt. So it's really easy to make and looks cute and is a fun summer garden accessory. So the things that you will need in order to make this um, are a couple of basic items. I like to use fabric that is water resistant like ripstop or vinyl or something like that. So you need some fabric. You also need a piece of thick foam. Now I have been using for these two a cut up piece of a swim kickboard. And so that's what I have here is a half of a kickboard um, that I've already cut. You can just cut this one in half. You can cut it in half with a razor blade or a craft knife and it works just fine for cutting your kickboard. Then you will also, if you want, um, to put handles on, I just used some fake leather or again, some vinyl to create those handles, but this would work without handles as well. Um, so you cut your fabric the correct size by just creating a rectangle that will enclose your part of the kickboard. So you want to make sure that when you fold it over and accounting for seam allowance, you'll have some extra there. So you can see that I will be able to sew and then hopefully sli still slide the kickboard in. You want to have a couple inches on top of the kickboard to attach your handles and then also your closure and fold over the top to finish it. So make sure you have three to four inches on the top and then on the bottom, you will just have about a one inch um, extra for the seam allowance. So if your fabric is bigger than that, you wanna trim it down a little bit to size and then we'll get putting it together. So I've already put one handle on and you can see how it's put together. I sewed the handle together and then I went ahead and just pinned it on to the fabric and sewed around these little handles. So this is just something uh, that I cut myself and created this shape, but you could make a different handle shape or sort of copy this one if you like the way it looks. So let's go ahead and start sewing the handle on. I'm going to pinch it in half and then sew along that straight edge to sort of form the handle. And you're going to sew close-ish, but not all the way on top of the edge of the vinyl. You do probably want to backstitch a little bit to sew along it. When you're sewing with vinyl, you might need to use a leather needle or a sharper needle to be able to punch through the fabric. Just try a little piece and make sure you have the right needle for the job. So now we have our handle formed and we can pin it on. And I want it opposite of what I already have. So I'm gonna fold my fabric in half to use the underside as a guide and I can feel where I put the first handle and we're going to try and mirror that on the second side. Okay, so we will place that there and then I will put a pin through it to hold it in place. And you're gonna curve it around, make sure you're not twisting your handle and mirror it on the second side and pin that in place. So you can see how this one, on this one, I just sort of sewed a horseshoe shape and we're gonna do the same to attach the second handle. There are some things you need to keep out of the way and make sure you're not sewing on the pin. So sometimes it gets a little bit tricky to go around, but essentially you're just making uh, a curved shape the best you can going around. And if you need to lift your foot and pivot to make it easier, go ahead and do that and then continue sewing on the circle. It might be easier for you to make sort of a square shape to attach um, your handle with, but you can play around with and decide what works for you. And again, if you use um, thread that is matching of your vinyl, then it won't really matter because you won't really see your seams. Let's see. Okay, so let's sew the second one on. Turn this back around and to kind of play with how it can fit under the presser foot. And we're not sewing a full circle. We are just sewing a semicircle. So you won't sew the very top where the handle is coming out. We're just sewing a circle around the bottom part. And if you can see if you're able to just make it make a circle or you need to lift and pivot, 
up to you as you're testing this. And then as you come back around, you're gonna back stitch, trim your thread, and then lift your presser foot. All right, so now we have two handles attached and I'm gonna go ahead and hem the top edge of this fabric. You could also do this before you sewed your handles if you wanted to, but I kind of wanted to see the placement and make sure it was okay. So I am just gonna turn over about a half inch hem at the top of my bag. You could make it wider or narrower depending on what fabric you're working with and how you want it to lay. Now you'll notice that I'm not really finishing the raw edge of this fabric. I'm simply sewing it and that's because this is ripstop fabric and it won't fray and we won't lose any of the integrity of the fabric even as we use it. So it's easy just to turn under and sew. We don't have to do any finishing along the way. I am trying to keep my handles out of the way as I'm sewing. So I probably would recommend doing this before you sew the handles on, but I did kind of like to see how big my hem should be based on where my handles were. Okay, so now we have the top done. And you can see our two handles and our hemmed over edge and some threads we need to clip, but we'll do that in a minute. And we're going to place it right sides together and sew the sides and the bottom of our bag. Now I'm gonna use just a couple of clips and I like using the clips for this rip stop because it does have a plastic coating on the back and the pin pokes a hole in it and kind of leaves a bigger mark. So if you have fabric that it's gonna leave a mark by using the pin, these clips are a great alternative. And I'm going to stitch around the side and the bottom using approximately a 3 8 seam allowance. But you can cut as big or as small of a seam allowance as you want because you're the one designing the size of this little bag for your foam that will then become your kneeling pad. I'm gonna pivot at the corner and then sew across the bottom. All right, so now we've created the bag shape, but we have to add a closure and put the foam in. So just like any other time when you have sewn, you will wanna clip the corners before you turn it. This will just help to give it a little bit nicer shape as you are doing it. And then also here we have this seam allowance. It would be best to finish before we turn the bag right side up. So I'm just gonna pop back to the sewing machine and stitch this seam allowance open so that when we turn the bag, we have a nice finished edge. So you can simply just do stitching about a half inch down on either side of the seam allowance to secure it over and that will just give our bag or our kneeling pad a nice finished look. So I'm just gonna go forward and backwards on one side and then I'll go forward and backwards on the other. Again, just about a half inch to secure that seam allowance over and give us a finished look. Once we've done that, we can now turn our pad bag right side out. Okay, so now we want to turn it right side out. And depending on the fabric you chose and how thick it is, it could be trickier. Some fabrics are stiffer than others. But make the bottom corners as nice of a shape as you can. But again, this is, if it's just for your garden, this doesn't have to look perfect as you're doing it. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our foam inside. And you want it to be snug, but not too tight or you won't be able to get it inside. So you should be able to pull or push it inside the cover. And this will just protect it, plus give you a cute cover. And I like to add a little snap closure so that the foam doesn't slip and slide around. So we're gonna go ahead and add that right here on the top of our project. 
And I'm going to put it just between one snap between the handles. So you'll take your snap, and if you feel like your fabric needs to be reinforced, you could go ahead and do that, add a second piece or um, some interfacing on the back. And we will set our snap on one side. Okay, and then we'll flip it over and feel for the placement on the other side to put the second side of the snap. You could use hook and loop or a button. If you wanted to get really decorative or you were giving these for gifts, you could make this as fancy or as simple as you wanted. But both a hook and loop or a button would look really cute here as a fastener for a fastener as well. So I just felt with my finger where the first snap was located so that I could line up where the second snap is. And I've poked a hole in my fabric, placed the snap through, found the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and set that into my fabric and you can snap it closed. And then you have a garden kneeling pad that you can use in your garden or you can gift to someone that you know who is a garden lover.